This is the Horoboros, the second King Salmonid added to Splatoon 3 Salmon Run. From my experience so far, the Horoboros is a much easier boss to defeat than the Kohozuna, however I still see many freelancers struggle with defeating it. So when my selfish desire to collect more boss Salmonid scales, I decided to make a guide on how exactly this boss works and common mistakes people make that lead them to failing the wave. The best way to do so was to record a bunch of Horoboros encounters and take note of what went right and what went wrong. Watch out gamers, I've committed a science. Man, doing all this science made me quite hungry. Good thing I have today's sponsor to keep my belly full. Factor. Factor provides fresh, ready-to-eat meals delivered to your doorstep. On busy days when I've got loads of recording, scripting, and editing to do, I always forget to think about food. Lucky for me, Factor is the perfect solution. They offer over 27 chef-crafted meals with 34 plus add-on options, so you can have your order based on your taste preferences and meal history. No prep, no mess. Factor cuts out the stressful meal plan and takes out the guesswork. After trying to think about the 500 clips to use in a video, I don't have the mental energy to think about what I want for dinner. With Factor, I can decide ahead of time and have my meal ready for when I get hungry. And the best part is, I can choose from all of their different preference options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and vegetarian. It is perfect for those busy days. Convenience has never felt so good. If you'd like to try out Factor for yourself, use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code FACTORSE3 3617 for 50% off your first box. Thank you Factor for sponsoring today's video. Unlike the original King Salmonid, Horoboros is a long serpent-like fish that floats around the map in circles, firing off those giant booyah bombs at your team. Its giant bod comes with a giant HP boost, the Kohozuna only has 40,000 HP, but Boris here has 55,000, that is a 37% increase in HP compared to the Kohozuna. So you'd think that this thing would be a lot harder to defeat, but that is not the case. My win rate while doing the science was a whopping 50%. Part of me wants to say that it's because I've gotten a lot better at Salmon Run, I did get that top 5% badge from the most recent big run, but the real reason for this higher clear rate is that unlike the Kohozuna, the Horoboros has a weak point. Just like you can do damage to the bomb of a steel head, you can do damage to the bomb of a Boris. This bomb has 2500 HP, and if you manage to blow it up, it will do an additional 5000 damage to the Serpentine Salmon. Oh, and the damage you do to the bomb is also dealt to Boris, so each bomb you blow up will deal a grand total of 7500 damage. To defeat this boss, you just need to blow up its bomb 8 times. Technically it's a little over 7, so you could just burst his bubble 7 times and then attack the main body to win, but it is 8 if you want to win with just bombs alone. And here comes the issue. You might think that 7 bombs isn't that much, but if you allow the Horoboros to just swim around and launch them at its natural pace, you'll realize that this boss only makes 8 bombs per wave. Its first bomb starts to form 5 seconds into the wave and they take take about 9 seconds to charge up, and then there's a 3-4 to four second sequence where the bomb is thrown and blows up. The thing is, Boris will start forming its next bomb as soon as the previous one touches the ground, so you have 11 seconds total between each bomb being thrown at you, and that means there are only 8 full bombs per wave. If you manage to blow up the bomb, the new one will form 4 seconds later, so by blowing up the bombs, you can cut down that 9 second charge time and get a few more bombs to spawn per wave. My fastest clear so far has been in 50 seconds seconds, where we blew up the bombs only 6 times. Had we just let the bombs form and flow naturally, the 6th bomb would have been thrown at us at the 22 second mark, so we effectively cut down the frequency of bombs from 1 per 11 seconds to 1 per 7.5 seconds. And if we weren't doing additional damage to clear the wave so soon, we still would have had 4 more bombs to attack before the timer ran out, so that's 10 bombs total. I know I just threw a bunch of math at you, but this is not a math class, so let me make sure I can explain what these numbers mean. Basically, you can get up to 10 bombs to spawn at most per wave, but in general you only get 8. You could be a funny guy and try to clear the wave by only attacking the main body instead of the weak point, but unless you're a turbo experienced overfisher, you will fail, and even overfishers might struggle to clear the wave without ever hitting the weak point. For most players, you'll need to blow up the bomb 5-6 to six times if you want to clear this wave. And this brings me to the 3 reasons you failed the Horoboros wave. Number 1 is that you don't blow up enough of its bombs. How many bombs can you miss? 3. 3 strikes and you are out. This doesn't mean you should just give up as soon as the 4th bomb lands. For one, there is a very very tiny percent chance that you can still clear the wave, which is better than zero, so at least give it a try. The other reason you shouldn't quit is because
because each bomb you blow up is an extra scale you win at the end. For more details on how the scales work, do check out the Koizuna guide, but basically every bomb you manage to blow up is equivalent to one scale at the end of the wave. Even if you lose the wave, you can still earn extra scales, so go and attack those bombs. Number 2. You don't protect your long range weapons. Since blowing up these bombs is key to clearing this wave, your long range weapons should be given the space to focus on attacking the bomb. You as a brush could not possibly blow up all of the bombs, so leave that to your Hydra, Sniper or other long range friend. Instead, you should focus on taking out the lesser Salmonids and other bosses before they can distract your long range teammates. If you are the long range teammate, focus on the weak point, but keep an eye on your surroundings. Every time you die, you let another bomb get launched, since it takes about 8 seconds for you to respawn and 9 seconds for a bomb to fully charge. You cannot do enough damage in that 1 second. Number 3. Wasting time on bosses. Now I know I just said that you need to take down the other bosses before they cause trouble for your teammates, but you need to be smart about it. Take this flyfish whose baskets get blocked by the Boris. Since you can't damage it or destroy the baskets, you should not be wasting your time or ink trying to distract it. Play smarter, not harder. Use the time to take out some of the lessers or prepare for when the baskets are out in the open. Another example is this Big Shot, which I decided to chase down. Yes, Big Shots are annoying, but I wasted so much time approaching it that that time could have been used to take out another boss or help blow up a bomb. Instead, I wasted a whole bomb cycle by going the wrong way. This is not to say that you should not splat the bosses, but that you need to be a bit more deliberate on which bosses you go after. Just to bring back the whole flyfish thing, if you destroy the left basket of a flyfish, the right basket will only attack the closest player. So if you stay closer to that flyfish, it will never target your long range weapon. So technically, you don't have to take out the other basket. You can focus on other bosses like stingers, which might be a lot more trouble for your long range weapons. It's just think what's gonna distract my long range player and go take care of that. Remember that even if you can't hit the weak point with your short range weapon, you can still toss a golden egg at it, which will deal 800 damage, so taking out bosses helps a lot. Overall, the main thing you need to remember is that you should focus on blowing up the bombs instead of just attacking the main body. If you attack the body, you need to do 55,000 damage, which is 69 golden eggs. Nice, but basically impossible. If you only attack the bombs, you need 26 golden eggs. Its bomb has 2500 health and each egg does 800 damage, so 4 eggs plus a bit of shots can blow up the bombs super fast and save you a lot more golden eggs. Either way, it suddenly becomes a lot more winnable, because that's about half of the eggs you need to defeat a Kohozuna, which explains why this boss feels a lot easier to defeat. If you remember nothing else from this video, the one takeaway is to go after the Boris bombs. Here, I even wrote a little poem for you. The horror Boris screams, making bombs is his dream. It's bubble you must burst. Ugh, hinklings are the worst. If you found this guide useful, please consider leaving a like and sharing it with a friend. The more people know about the specific mechanics of a boss and the common mistakes, the easier it will be for everyone to clear the wave. And if you've got any other tips or things you'd like to see a guide on, do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.